I kind of always loved the way the SVO sail panels looked. Pretty much every car I do, I shave the passenger side door lock. I have a rear rear view camera in there. And then I also radiused it to hug the fender. Oh my well. God. So if she gets the same feeling out of this car as I got out of my dad's 68 GTO, I win. You know? Ladies and gents, welcome back to the channel. So today I've got something a little bit different for you. It's an interview that I had the pleasure of doing over Zoom with two fantastic fellas, absolutely great guys. And as far as I'm concerned, completely Fox body royalty. These guys are the upper echelon of who's who in the zoo, okay? So the cars that I'm talking about, first and foremost, the War Admiral. A lot of you guys have probably seen some of the footage that's going around about this car. Tom is the owner of that car. The other car is Foxy Brown. And Jesse is the owner of Foxy Brown. Now the cool dynamic that we've got going on here is Tom is the customer of Jesse at Blue Sky Performance and Restoration. And Jesse is 50% of the, the two-man team that owns Blue Sky Performance. So we get all kinds of fun banter back and forth. Uh, Tom's got one idea, Jesse's got another. They meet in the middle. Sometimes one wins and the other one doesn't, but the end result is absolutely breathtaking. And then with Jesse, uh, he just had a picture in his head of what he wanted to accomplish. The car, his car, Foxy Brown, went through all kinds of iterations before it ended up in the one that it's currently in. The thing about this that I really wanted to, to try and accomplish with this, this chat that we have is, as much as I love seeing the finished product, I wanna know the who, the why, the where, the when, the how, I wanna know all that stuff. And more importantly, the inspiration behind what made a person wanna go to these great lengths to complete ultimately the cherry on top, which is the final product of that car. So that's what we get into. All kinds of fun banter. It gets a little dusty in the room at times. Uh, the, the story is quite touching, so uh, be forewarned. Anyway, uh, without further ado, guys, I'm gonna drop you into the interview that I had with Tom and Jesse, owners of War Admiral and Foxy Brown. And it's in and around the time that Jesse's explaining how Tom found Blue Sky Performance. And he kept coming in and my business partner, Jeff, who isn't here, he was like, Oh, you know, this guy's, he's got a notch back that, it's, that he's trying to buy. And he, but he wants us to do it. Cause we, we've always had Fox bodies, like not a ton, but a few. And he would see like my car out front and, or a couple others that we'd work on. Um, but like, as far as a full out build, Tom's car is kind of like the first full out custom build. We did a couple that were like really closer to stock and like, you just do wheels, um, you know, the, the, the catalog type stuff. Um, right. Whereas Tom, who was dead nuts in the middle of your safe zone, build a Fox body, stay within the original colors. And we kind of pushed him just outside the box, just to, to, to make it a little bit more unique than like your typical list of things of, like you buy a Fox body, it's like, okay, I'm going to put a Celine wing on this one with, I'm going to put, uh, you know, the GT skirts on it. Then I'm going to put the louvers on the back window. We didn't, we kind of wanted to do some more things that are not so catalogy to just set the car apart. And it made him lose a lot of sleep. That's for sure. <laughs> like I said, Jesse and I, uh, sometimes we have a big difference in uh, taste. But I think the end result is, uh, I mean, the end result speaks for itself, really, you know. You know, I've had, this is my eighth Fox body now, I think, since, you know, I, I got my license, really. And numerous of them, I bought, ripped apart, and they sat and sat and sat and ended up getting sold. Like, never got put back together. So this car, I couldn't, I really couldn't allow that to happen because it's got sentimental value to me. Like, this is my, my father's best friend's car, like, he loved this thing. I, I couldn't allow this car to just sit there. Could I put the car together? Yeah. Would it be this level? Probably not. And if it was, it would take me another five years to do what they did in three. So the solution for me, the best solution for me was, you know, I want to do my dad's best friend proud. You know, I didn't want this car. The man cried when he sold it to me. So 
you know, this was the avenue that was best for me to take to get the car what I wanted, what I wanted it to be, you know, in the quickest period of time. Okay, so that Tom, no, that's a I think, great place to to kind of jump over to to where your story with the car begins, and maybe even just fill everybody in. You touched on it a little bit, but you know, this is well, maybe is this Fox Body number nine or is this number eight? This is number nine. You know, I had um, my first Fox Body ever. My my actually, my friend Rod sold me to his eighty seven T top car, yellow car, seventeen, no money, dreaming. Bought the car. It needed a fuel pump. It sat in my backyard for almost two years because I had zero clue. You know, I was 17 years old. I had zero clue that it was as simple as a fuel pump. I ended up selling it back to him and that car ended up going away. And then, you know, years go by. I ended up buying a white GT. That was like that was like my car. Like that was the car people knew me in, you know. But um, this car, like, like people feared him on the streets because it was like a pro-charged you know gt like old school car and like at, like i had a buddy of mine he te- he 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 texts me and he goes yo world that war, war admirals tom schwenzer i was like yeah he goes dude his white gt was like the <laughs> back in the day like nobody could touch him and like so it was it was kind of cool he's like dude that that's so awesome he owns that car so it was like kind of cool like he used to be like famous for his car and now he it's like I'm back. <laughs> you know, during the course of all that, like I, I notchbacks have always been my thing. I'm a notchback guy, plain and simple. And um, I had like three or four in between. And I never managed to get them on the road. I didn't have the money. I didn't have the time, you know, and uh, it got to a point where my wife and I were trying to have a kid and, you know, there was some medical issues. So I had to sell everything. I sold everything, you know, to, to pay for some medical problems. And then I took like a 15 year break. So I didn't have a car for almost 15 years until this one. And that's really where, uh, you know, my, my dad comes into play, you know, I mean, it, the story is endless, you know, it goes like, uh, so my dad had a 68 GTO, you know, and, um, he used to take me to Dairy Queen, you know, local car shows, stuff like that in that car. And, you know, it was the coolest feeling as a little kid, you know, eight, nine, 10 years old when you got out of that car, you know, you'd look around like, look at me, you know, I'm getting out of this, this car. And I remember, you know, telling my friends, you know, bragging it up to my friends, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, you know, my parents ended up going through a rough divorce. The car got sold. It went away. So, you know, it's always been in me to like have, have a cool car. I just never had the resources until I got to about this age, you know? Now, a big part of this story, if I've got my facts correct, is um, your old man got sick. And Yeah. Uh, right. So my, my father raised me and my sister by himself. He was a single father. We didn't have a lot of, I mean, poor, to be honest with you. I mean, the man would go to work three, four, five, six days at a time. We wouldn't see him. I was, you know, very close to my father. Uh you know, it, it, it's hard to even talk about it, really. But he comes to my house one day and, you know, he sits down at the table. We're talking like you and I are talking right now. And he's like, hey, you know, I, I can't, can't really I'm having a real hard time swallowing. So I'm like, oh, you know, you don't think nothing of it. You know, I'll go to the doctor. You know, so he goes to the doctor like a week later, he comes back. Hey, listen, you know, they, they did a bunch of rapid tests. Yeah, he had like stage four esophagus cancer that spread through throughout his body. So he went from talking like you and me to not here in a matter of like eight weeks. Oh, and it, it, uh, it really traumatized me in a way, you know, oh, my, daughter me up, like, buddy. Yeah, my daughter was only, my daughter was only two years old. So it, it hit me, it hit me real hard, you know? And that kind of brings me back to the GTO because I skipped a bunch in the story there. You know, with that car, he sold it to my uncle. You know, my uncle was young during the divorce. So we ended up getting the car back, but it needed like a full restoration, you know. So when my dad passed away, you know, leading up to my dad passing away for years, we talked about restoring this car together. We're going to do this. We're going to do that with it. And he'd always say, one day we're going to get it. One day we're going to get it. One day. 
you know, one day never came. So after he passed away, I was in the right state of mind. You know, I, uh, I, I had dumpsters come to the house, this, that, and the other thing, clean everything out. You know, a, a friend of mine, Mike, was like, hey, what are you doing with the car? And I was like, you know what, man? Just put it on the trailer, junk it. Like, I just wasn't mentally there to, to deal with that, you know? So it went away. I didn't see it for, for a while. But, uh, you know, that, that one day really stuck with me. Like, one day... I'm going to, you know, build this car one day. I'm going to have that house, you know, and I watched my dad's one day with his dream car, never, never come to reality, you know? So it hit me like, I didn't want that to be me. So his neighbor, Bob, who was also his best friend owned this car for years. And I used to always hound him and hound him and hound him about it. I mean, you know, we get attached to these cars. You know, everybody watching this is, is attached to their car. It's really hard for him to sell to me, but he kind of that I, I was in, I wasn't right. Think commuter, you know, you live up north, we need four-wheel drive commuters. <laughs> I'm driving down the road one day and the thing starts smoking. And uh, I I'll pull over the side of the road, I open the door, the thing's in flames. When I tell you it burnt, I mean the wheels melted. Not two hours after the fire trucks put that out, Bob calls me. Hey, man, if you want the car, <laughs> it's yours. And I'm like, well, I just lost six, seven thousand dollars in a Jeep. <laughs> and now he wants me to buy the roller. But, you know, long story short, I think this car was his way of saying, hey, man, I got you. From there, it sat in my garage for a year. I didn't know what to do with it contemplating doing it myself and that that's when I stopped and, and saw Jeff and Jesse you know and they took over the reins and we've had our back and forth about <laughs> some decisions with it but um you know this car all these cars my car whatever the story may be you know these these cars become part of us in a way you know your car my car his car they all got history so I don't know. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool how this car, you know, I would lay in bed thinking about how miserable I am missing my dad. And the second I got this thing, I'd find myself laying in bed, not thinking about that anymore. Now it was, what am I going to do to the car? So in, in a sense, this car kind of helped me get past, you know, my father's death in a way. You know, it's 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 crazy how something with four tires can have that much impact. Oh, four tires in life, you know, nine hundred and fifty horsepower. Yeah. cars you know are are so deeply in, in rooted in, in us you know and I, I feel like the fox body community in whole has that a little bit more than some of the others you know when i talk to guys but yeah that's when i enlisted these guys and and, and you know they did me well you know I, I i consider them friends and what they did with this car is you know it's it speaks for itself Jess, I wanted to just ask you quick, why don't you give us a hundred mile an hour kind of 10,000 foot view of Blue Sky? Because I think you guys are a pretty special little shop there. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, we have a lot of fun here. Um, my business partner, Jeff, and I have known each other since we were seven. We grew up down the street from each other. Um, I, I got an 89 in high school and I started driving him to, to school. When he got his license, he got a 90. Um, and we just, it was like, you know, that was, that was what we were car kids. That's what we did was we worked on cars. Um, we ended up going to college together. We went to Pennsylvania college technology. We, we were roommates. I don't know how it works. It's crazy how it works, but we were roommates together. I was his best man in his wedding. He was his, my best man at my wedding. And, um, in 2009, I started working here just a 22 year old kid wanting to work on, you know, cool cars. 
Um, and very soon after we needed a mechanic, Jeff was working at a Lincoln dealership uh, in another small repair shop in town. And it was just general repairs. And I said, well, you know, do you want to come work for Blue Sky? And at the time it was Blue Sky Classic Cars. Um, they did like, they, it was an older gentleman. He didn't know anything about cars. He was a pretty good business businessman. And all, all the guys in the shops were like my age, like 25, 20. So, and he, and our boss was in his mid seventies. So it was a really neat dynamic because people would come in and they'd see all these kids working on these nice cars. And then they go in and there's an old guy sitting at the desk. Um, so fast forward till 2014, he sold the business. It was bought and the management wasn't that great. Um, there was just some differences in opinions on how to run this type of business. It's a, it's a customer based business. You, you can't buy a car, restore it and sell it for tons of profit. It's just, it's just not how, how it goes. So about six months in, it, they, they were like, all right, we're, we're shutting our doors. We're, we're done with this. And at the time my father was approaching um, retirement and we had Jeff and I had already like kind of like nonchalantly looked at a couple shops to like call our own. And my father got together with us and he's like, look, I'll help you guys, you know, purchase the, I'll give you a, a small loan, purchase the inventory and, and the, some of the equipment and stuff like that. And we contacted all of the customers and said, look, we're taking over. Oh, and we ended up signing a lease for this place. Um, and our, the guy who was selling the business, who was closing the doors was thrilled because he was like, all right, cool. I, I get to wipe my hands clean. So Jeff and I went into business with for ourselves um, in 2015. And from there, it just, it's been up since then. And um, we're, we're building some cool stuff. You know, it was, I was a Fox body kid. And then I started getting introduced to other brands like Chevy and <laughs> a couple Dodges. And I realized they're all junk in stock form. Uh, you know, so we kind of started doing the custom stuff and we're really happy to see Fox bodies. Cause that like brings us back. Like I'm a, I'm like a 17 year old kid again, working on these cars with just a little bit more experience at this point. So, and that's really ultimately why I came to this shop. You know, when I first stopped in here, you know, I, I talked to Jeff a little bit. He was straight up with me, you know, no, no nonsense. Oh, no, no, it's going to be 10 grand. No, they, they, they were very honest with me right up the front, which I appreciated, you know, and the real selling point, and you can talk to this guy about it in a second, was I walked up because they got they got laid out two shops here, a mechanical shop and then a body shop up top. I walked up there and I'm like, I want to paint the car white, like my old white GT. And I swear to you, he looked at me and goes, no, <laughs> I'm not painting your car white. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's my car. You're going to paint it whatever car I want. No, I'm not. And I found that to, I didn't take that as an insult. I took that as like, I didn't know Jesse at the time. This guy cares about my car as much as I do. You know, that's who yeah. you want to enlist to do work on your cars. You know, like he takes it every bit as serious as I do. And that right there was a sound point for me. Now, why don't you tell us a little bit about Foxy Brown? All right. So, um, when I graduated college in 2008, um, my eight, the 80, my first 89, I like that car. It felt like I had it for like 20 years, but I had, I, like, like I said, I bought it in 2003 and by 2008, it was like a 17 year old had it. So it was like just butchered and it was rotted. It was an East coast car. The shock towers were rotted. The floor was pretty rotted out. You know, the typical Fox body areas, and I had always wanted a T-top car. So I, I went on Craig, I think it was Craigslist, and I found an 88 T-top car project roller that just somebody didn't, it was, guy was building it for his wife. And he just, you know, typical, they came with a full black interior with flow fit seats that I sold like an idiot, like a full OEM black interior. And this was circa 2008, nine. So the SN95 dash swap was like the bee's knees. So I was like, I'm doing an SN95 dash swap. 
like, cause that was really cool. And I did the SN95 dash swap and, and I never loved it cause the fit and finish just, it wasn't as OEM as it should be. And again, I built a car when I was 21, 22. So, you know, again, the rushing things. Car was super nice. I painted it black with silver two-tone. It was the height of the chip foose two-tone paint job. So it was like, you know, the overhaul and two-tone. So I was like, all right, I, I even, I made a, a, a model car in my college house, painted black and silver two-tone. I was super pumped and I painted it. And it had some salt and pop issues. So I was never like super happy about the paint job quality anyway. So I, I, in 2015, 14, 15, I decided I want to repaint it. And I wanted, I want to just do a single color because the two tone thing had come and gone. So I was like, you know what? I, I want to pick a color that's just way outside of the box, you know, so I, a Toyota Tundra passed me I'm like, man. And it was like, it was, the sun was setting and the color is just like, it's, it's awesome. It's like, I'm going to paint my car brown. And like a couple of people were like, dude, brown, like, are you kidding me? And I did it. And then everybody loved it. And, and uh, I'm super happy with it. And then fast forward another five years and again, I rushed the paint job. It was a really, it was a decent paint job. Like I did the full r &I, I pulled the moldings out. I pulled the windows out, completely took it apart. But it just, there was just, it wasn't what my customer's cars look like. So then last year, I was like, I've had this idea in my head. Well, you were going to sell it. He was going to oh, sell it. I was going to sell it. I, I really, call him out on it. He was going to sell it. <laughs> I, 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 I listed it. It was what was that 2018? Yeah. I listened to it for like for all my car here. It was non-turbo at the time. It was just like a AFR 165s. <clears throat> I listed it for like 14 grand and everybody called me crazy. But now I'm like, man, that car would have sold like crazy in 2021. Like <laughs> it definitely would have sold. <laughs> so I um so I I well before that, no, after I listed it for sale, I I was like, no, nah, oh, dude, I've had this car since 2008. I can't, I can't sell it. And, but I missed the Fox dash. And I was like, I really missed just an all black dashboard, like the creme de la creme. So I was like, you know what? I want to make the car. I want to make the car as like, like when I was 17, like the nicest it, it could be. So I put the Fox dash back and I actually found an 88 GT T top car parts car that was like roached for 250 bucks and i got all those little stupid tchotchke parts that i needed to put the fox dash back in it i put air conditioning back in it um and it was it just it just feels so much better with the correct dash in it and um and then i did the twin turbo thing and it was still four lug and then once it was fast the four lug the stock brakes were just the first time it finally made like 10 pounds, the stock brakes were like, hell no, hell no. So then I was like, all right, I'm going to do the five lug conversion. I want to do IRS. And when I first built the car back in 2008, it was Ibach drag springs, you know, 50 fifties with 90 tens up front. I just wanted to go, I wanted to drag race it. And now it's like, you know what? I want the car to handle good. I want it to ride good. So I did IRS in the back. And, and then I had this idea in my head, like I've always loved Capri's and everybody calls Capri's wider, but in my head, I'm like, they're not wider. They're not wider. They're dimensionally the same. They're just the body lines higher. I said, so I want to put Mustang flares on top of them. And he was like, dude, are you kidding me? No, no, no. That's, that's ridiculous. And it was a lot. <laughs> I told of you we got, we got different tastes sometimes. Yeah. And uh, I was like, I'm going to do it. And I, I, I met a dude um, in Pennsylvania. His name's Colby. He's probably gonna he's probably gonna watch this. Him and his father have like the sickest Ford collection. He's got a, a 70, uh, yeah, 70 boss 302 that's like super, it's like a rare, like 
yellowy gold with this crazy like plaid interior or something. He's, he, he, he keeps posting pictures all the, like he just posted a picture last week of an 82 GT, the, the maroon 82 GT. I'm like, I had no idea he had this. And he had a Capri that was roached. I mean, the whole frame rail under the battery was gone. And I bought the, the shell and I bought a pair of fenders and he gave me the four eye quarter windows. And he's I was like, how much you want? He goes, dude, you can't use the shell. I'm like I literally just need it for like the quarter panels. So that's it. It's like the roof's been smashed in. Everything's rotted. I don't care. And he looked at me like I was crazy. I loaded it up, brought it back. And then the next day I started adding the Mustang flares onto the Capri stuff. In May 14th, I finished it. So in a span of five and a half months, I completely tore the car apart. I did all the body work, you know, all the custom stuff. I, you know, got, I sent the wheels out to be rebarrel. Um, so the amount of work I put in, in a small amount of time was like, I didn't think it could happen, but I, I didn't think it was going to happen. <laughs> it was a lot. I watched the whole process firsthand. I would yeah. come in on a weekly basis and Good thing I, I was it. like, you got like a week to go yeah. before the chocolate fox. And this thing is like, I was like, <laughs> writing it down to like to the, each week I would write down like, okay, put the fenders on half hour, put the front bumper on half hour. And like, I'd break it down and be like, all right, I need to average each day, 2.75 hours a day on my own car. Also while working on customers cars. And it was like, no, it was Jotham Fox. I, I adjusted the rear coilovers and in the trailer it went and off to the show we, we went, I didn't, I didn't rush anything. It was like, it's crazy. It was, yeah, it was, it was wild. I wouldn't be able to do that this year. Cause I'm, I'm expecting my first child uh, in January. So <laughs> well, you're not showing at all. That's good. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> One quick thing, Jess, before we get off uh, Foxy yep. Brown, I know you've got no molding on that front window, maybe even your rear too. Yeah. So, so this, I brought the, the normal, it's funny, I can use Tom's car because we didn't do it on his car. <laughs> hey, Tom, Tom <laughs> He's jealous. He, he's jealous. <laughs> so the factory windshield like comes to about there. Yeah. So I brought it in and then basically the mounting pad has to be raised up three sixteenths of an inch because when you normally set the glass, it sits down. So sure, it would fit flush, but then it wouldn't be you know, as streamlined as this. So I actually, we have to bring the floor. I call it the floor of the windshield frame up. Um, and then while I was doing that, I got rid of the pinch weld. There's normally the, the rubber pinch weld cover. Right. So I got rid of that. So that smoothed up and it kind of, it made the a pillar look more substantial. Yeah, it definitely does. It just, it, you don't just have that little, you know, three quarters of an inch of color. And again, I was afraid it might be too much because again, I'm somewhat of a Fox body like purist. So I didn't want it to look like I just painted the moldings, but I, I like it because it has like a new edgy type of look, a SN95 type of look. And then I came down here and I, I kind of peaked the fender instead of uh, having a, a, a round edge on the fender. I peaked it and gave it like that way it has more of a gap, just right. a little tiny stupid detail that I was just a little bit of time with a welder and a file and grinder. And I, I, I think it helped out a lot. And then down here, it always bothered me that the GT cars and the LX cars, it's, I think it's more noticeable on the GT cars where the bumper ends. So the, the, the detent or whatever in the molding, it, ends here and then starts again right so i so i shaved it so that it kind of represents it kind of matches the cobra rear bumper you know when the, the cobra rear bumper doesn't have the seam like the gt and lx cars have so i kind of wanted to mimic that with the servini stuff and then you can see unbelievable and then i you know also went ahead and kind of worked on getting the fit and finish you know these cars even from the factory that was never really they're that terrible flush. so i kind of spent a lot of time to to uh you know you can kind of see the lines in the floor 
they're not really that disrupted. And we come to the the beautiful Capri body lines. That is so cool, Jess. I like. I just love that. Thank you. And then <clears throat> it was actually this flare is actually modified to come out another half inch. So I would I would expect that this with the stock flare would would add an inch. It actually only had, ended up adding a half inch. Oh, so interesting. I was, yeah, I, I I I was thinking an inch, but it only added a, a half an inch. So after that, the metalwork was done, I recut the arch and pulled it out so I could get a full inch more on the front wheel. Um, okay. Right now, it has a nine. I with the tubular control arms, I could do a ten up front with no problem. I could go another inch on the inside, but for now, a two sixty five on a nine is is all I'm gonna gonna have. And it clears. It yes. Clears. How did it work for wheel well liners? Stock wheel well liners. I just I just cut them back. Um, they don't physically attach up here, um, but they are in place and they are you know screwed in place everywhere else you can put it. Um, but I wasn't gonna dick around with adding a bunch of plastic crap. <laughs> totally. So and then uh, the SVOs. I kind of always loved the way the SVO sail panels looked, but I didn't think, I don't think the four eye quarter windows look great on an aero car. They're just a little too rudimentary and like too, too central eighties, if that makes any sense. So I found, I started looking at, I've always loved ASD McLaren Capris. And I noticed that they had this like flush mount looking quarter window and um, I ended up finding a guy who sells all ASC McLaren stuff and uh, got a set. And I just, I think it just adds to the slickness. Well, yeah. And that seamless program you're running, right? Yeah, exactly. It, it's, I, I toyed with the idea of having my buddy make me a custom set of glass that is legit, like one piece of glass all the way. But again, he was like, you're looking at like 1500 bucks a pop. I was like, yeah, no. <laughs> Ouch. Because it would have to be tempered. And it just, this was a really nice, happy medium. This was 175 bucks. So, <laughs> right. Okay. Well, while we're doing this, uh, this cruise around, why don't you give me some of the stuff that nobody notices on the War Admiral? Because I know All you right. guys, like, I think one of the coolest things about Tom's car is the fact that he touched on it a little bit earlier, but just how he decided, you know, he got that special bottle of wine and to heck was saving it. He was drinking it that night and was going to enjoy it. And cause you don't know if tomorrow's coming and yeah. it's the whole reason that this car, I, I think that was probably nine tenths of, of the, the whole program with that build, right? Like let's just make this what it needs to be. Yeah. Yeah. He was, uh, he was great. Um, he actually, he didn't look at one invoice until, uh, his wife needed it to insure the car, <laughs> which is great. Uh, you know, he, he, he knows that we're going to do it. You know, I don't, as a car builder, you don't bill for all your time. You know, it's it just, sometimes you're like, Oh man, that, that seems, Anything I do is expensive. I, I hate to say it. It's just the world of custom cars. But I still put in more time than I actually do just to, you know, make ease the blow. And, and it quite it, it's kind of like investing in myself and in ourselves because then it adds to our por portfolio and that kind of has value in it. So it's worth it to, to give the customer back a little bit. Because at the end of the day, it's my work and it keeps, keeps the customer happier. 100%. But, uh, but yeah, here, I don't know. Maybe this helps now. There we go. So throughout the build, I, I would say like, oh, I want to build you a tank cover slash diffuser. And as soon as I said diffuser, he was like, hell no. He's thinking those like Japanese cars with the humongous diffusers off the back, you know, and. I said, no, 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 no. Like it's super subtle. Like you won't even see it. And 
he proceeded to lose a bunch of sleep that night. And uh, he goes, all right, just, just do it. So I came up with this idea. It's just a simple tank cover made out of aluminum. This is like three pieces. Um, it bolts in to the rear bumper support and then goes up and bolts up uh, like right in front of, into the, uh, the spare tire floor. And then the spats, the diffuser spats are actually removable because I didn't want it. I wanted them to be substantial, but I didn't want them to be like molded in or any. I wanted to have nice crisp lines. That so it's is all not unbelievable. And I painted satin black. I didn't want to paint a body color. I didn't want people to see it um, at first glance. And when when I first did it, I sent him a picture of it, like right about there, just so you could barely see. And he, he sends me like four text messages, bro, I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. <laughs> and then he came and, ah. and then he came and saw it once it was done. I said, that's all you get until it's finished and painted and on the car. And when he came and saw it, he's like, wow, that's, you know, it's so subtle that it just, it's not too much. Like that's kind of how this car is. It's, it's a lot, but not too much. And that was, that's kind of our style at blue sky. We don't want to do too much, but we want it to like kind of want things to hide at first. So that kind I of love that program, buddy. Absolutely yeah. love it. Yep. And then like the badge that we had made, you know, we kind of being a, a, a police, you know, getting the old police interceptor badge. It was like, Hey, why don't we do something? He wanted to name the car and he came up with war admiral. Yeah. Actually I bought a, a Ford yeah. police interceptor and I sent it to Evo. Evo Industries in California, they make probably some of the nicest one-off parts, emblems. I mean, they'll, the stuff they make, if you don't follow them on Instagram, follow them because their stuff is on. We just, we just got a couple parts for uh, another 62 Impala we're doing and the stuff is just unbelievable. So I knew they would knock it out of the park and I sent him just the, a brand new police interceptor. I said, make it say War Admiral. And they whipped it up and they also did the six liter emblems, which many is a, a, a touchy subject for people because they say, well, a 363 is 5.949 cubic inches. I right. said, yeah, well, 50 is actually, or, or 302 is actually 4.949. <laughs> or, or leaders i'm sorry oh uh, those those if there's one thing that's the death me of this car it's those six so badges on a daily i mean i i watch videos of people from foxtoberfest walking around like oh we got this car is beautiful oh it's got an ls you know when the hood's down i'm like <laughs> no it doesn't have an no, ls doesn't. <laughs> so yeah and like i mean the body the the car was super clean um it was an extremely well-kept car so the, we, we were able to go over the factory paint and just fix the factory factory waves and, you know, in the, the B pillars that or C pillars that every Fox body has in the lead seams, you know, the, the old stamping waves that are usually in the tops of the quarters. We kind of just refined it um, again, shave the, the trunk lock just to, it just looks super clean without it. Although my car, I have a rear rear view camera in there. Nice, very nice. <laughs> yeah, we shave the I pretty much every car I do, I shave the passenger side door lock because it's kind of pointless to have a passenger side door lock. So almost 90% of the cars we do, if it's a custom, I just go ahead and shave it off because I think it, it looks a little bit more clean and modern. Hey antenna. Shave the rear shoulder seat belt. Yeah, we got rid of the Shoulder seatbelts, you can't see it through the tent. <laughs> well, um, the rear deck. Yeah, we got rid of those mostly because black shoulder belts, you couldn't buy new, but yeah, you can buy the black. It was yeah. like the one part that we couldn't source out. So we, we ended up being kind of like, you know what? It'll look cleaner without them. We don't need them. So we delete them and we just put a, like a lap belt in. You know, a lot, a lot of things too that were done like, like, like here. You know, up up in here in the jams, you know, this was all color coded at one point. And well, they they painted the this black, but right up in here is always body color. 
And it always bothered me because when the doors closed, like on white cars, you can see that white in there. So right. if, if, if we were outside, I just, a lot of the cars I do, I just end up painting satin black back there. It just, it kind of makes it all blend better, right. look a little bit more factory. Absolutely. Um, and then the pinch weld covers I, I hand fabricated. Uh, do you mind if I ask you, Jess, what you made them out of? Aluminum. Wow. Yeah, I made them out of aluminum. Um, there's like a little rubber seal that just seals to the body. And then they're nut serted with machine screws through the, the backside of the pinch weld. And, okay. Uh, Makes sense. Yeah. I get a lot of people ask me if I can make them a set and really everything like the tank cover, it's kind of tailor fit to the car. Um, maybe I'm just not smart enough to be able to ma mass produce them. Well, but Jess, you know what? Be Let's be honest too. Like those pinch welds, how many of these poor cars have been, they've had a two post hoist on them and they're just pinch right. welds are beat. Right. And there's, we all know there's, there's pinch weld covers out there and they're great. I mean, they're, a super nice product but you know with the theme of the car like hiding things hiding things in plain view i wanted the pinch weld covers to continue with the same angle and not you know not have conflicting angles i wanted it to all be nice and smooth so that's where we just decided to go ahead and 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 kind of tailor make a set for this car and then i also radius it to hug the fender oh my well. god and it kind of matches the maker's garage splitter you know the, the splitter kind of hugs that as well so i wanted to to match that and again it just has like a little machine screw on the end there that is staggering thank you i appreciate it and then, oh and then <laughs> Right before Foxtoberfest, he wanted me to make him a, a radiator support cover. Again, I, I got people. People probably wouldn't want to know how many hours I have in it. <laughs> but it was very difficult. We found out it was very difficult to make a, like a one-piece cover for a fiberglass hood um, because of, you know, the, the support ribs or whatever that are in it. So I had to, I lost a lot of sleep on this one, but, but we, we, you know, hand fabricated it so that it's kind of one piece and it just, the engine bay wasn't right without something covering those ridiculous holes. Ford cut a massive corner on that, you know? Yep. Like, well, just the way that they like, oh, I could go on for hours, but I mean, it was like everything was an afterthought with Ford. Oh, let's just, we'll drop the motor in and then we'll lay the wires over top of everything. <laughs> yeah. But we'll give and them like, enough in case you want to tuck them behind the fenders. And you look at like a 78 Fairmont or like a, a, a 79 Mustang and those bays almost look already shaved because it's like Ford was like, oh, we need a hole here. Just add one into the process. And like by the end, like a 93 has like 285 unused holes in the engine bay and it's like it's crazy my car i when i first did the car in 2008 i shaved the bay and i probably had like 250 hours in the bay and now it, it i'm embarrassed to pop though it's it's pretty bad because i stopped caring <laughs> right <laughs> but, it's so much little things Gary. Like you know it's not even it's it's a lot of things that, that just make something different like like the maker's garage splitter like Instead of just leaving it oh, pure yeah. carbon, you know, we painted it, you know, half of it. Yeah, it kind of oh color matched it and just left the leading edge carbon just to, to give it that just little so, extra. Just so it's blend. Diff different than the next one. You know, a lot, a lot of things like that to make it different than the next one. This, the interior color made Tom lose a lot of sleep as well. Um, Cause I mean, you got to be honest, nothing beats a black interior. A Fox like that was like the creme de la creme back in the day. Like, oh, I found a car that has black interior. And I agree. But this car, I, I just, it, it screamed to me that it needed something just different. Um, 
Well, you know, yes, I'll, I don't mean to cut you off, buddy, but I would say the only thing that beats a black interior is this interior. <laughs> I appreciate you know, that. Our interior shop these these are pro uh, rally pro car uh, by Scat. Yeah, pro yeah. car by Scat seats. With pro me. car rally seats, and you can buy them bare, and we just ship them right to our upholstery guy. Um, shout out to Gillen Interiors in Middletown, New York. Um, and but it had to have halos, had to, because otherwise it just has this big goofy flat headrest and uh you know i asked him can you wrap them he said absolutely so we ended up they're wrapped in leather Jeez. Just, i think it just it just has that touch of og fox body that just works so well and then just kept i mean we didn't want to add too much color to the dash it was i kind of took in uh inspiration from the s550s that have a similar color to this it's, i think it's maybe more brown where the seats are brown there's a insert in the door panel but otherwise it's black with you know the typical trim of an s550 i just thought it was a, a just the right amount of color and this was probably the most difficult thing to to convince tom on because he just you know he he had a hard time seeing past black well, it's kind of that whole, um, like I, the gun metal in brown um, has a neat flair to it. Like it's just a really nice contrast. Yeah, it's, it's classy. And funny story on the, on the gun metal. The color was also a very, very difficult color to pick. We, we were all over the place. He, he was white, red, black. And then we were like 85% stuck on Nardo gray, you know, that typical pastel gray color. That's, that was super like, popular. Like a lead foot gray. Yeah. Lead foot gray. And the kind of we like were, that concrete color, like almost the yeah. primer gray. Right. Yep. Yeah. And it, it would have looked good. Um, but Tom, it, it, it actually, I was like all about it. I'm like, Tom, you can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. It's going to look great. Going to look great. And this is not to insult anybody who's painted their car lead foot gray, but it was, it's been super popular from 2015 until, you know, it's still pretty popular now. He wanted the car to be timeless and it's, you know, this type of mineral gray is pretty timeless. You know, he didn't want someone in 20 years to see the car and say, oh, that car was painted in 2018. He wanted someone to say, you know, look at it and be like, oh man, did you just paint it? No, we painted it 20 years ago because it's a pretty timeless color. Right. And I actually, he actually changed my mind when he said he, you know, I don't think this lead foot gray or anything's going to be timeless. Not saying it's a bad color. No, absolutely don't, not. I love, don't want to. In, uh, I, I love the color. I just, you know, I recall, you know, you, you see a car from the eighties. He goes, man, that car was painted in 1980 or, you know, you know, that kind of feel like, oh, that kitchen was done in 1970. I didn't want that. I wanted something endless, but we did. I just want to show you this real quick. If you zoom in on the door, we did. Oh, we did save the original color. Another fine detail. Cool. That pays, that pays uh, homage to the original wild strawberry. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I think like I'm trying to picture in my head how I, those seats and that concrete gray or whatever, however you, whatever you call it. Um, I don't think it would have pulled off the same, like yeah. I kind of, I'm looking at this almost like a blued rifle with a leather strap. If that makes any sense to you, you know, kind of, yeah. a the, the seats literally almost match the color of the rear defroster. Yeah. And that's, it it, it, it's honest to God truth. That's funny. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. And then the old two inch hood, he, he won on that one, but I'm, that, uh, <laughs> he, uh, he was right on that. Um, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of the heat extractor hood, as you can see on my car. And it's on this car. Sorry, it's a bit of a mess. This is uh, the 90. We call it hot summer 91. It's got a pretty neat story. This is the Dutch car. Well, we're going to yeah. have to maybe do a couple more calls here, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this car, we're going to um, we're probably going to unveil it at the Chocolate Fox next year. Um, it's pretty cool. It's our, it's our customer's 
br- uh, late brother's car. He was the original owner. It's a 90 and um, it's going to have a little throwback. It had, it had pinstriping on it when we got it and it was pink and teal and had oh like my. this, like it had like this three color, like not super 90s thing. And, and it said hot summer 91 on the quarter window and we're keeping it. We're, we're, we're going back. To we're running it. with it. Yeah. It's just, it worked really well. We're, we got uh, a set of the maker's garage concave um, classic, the reimagined classics going on it. Beautiful. So, yeah. But that, yeah, that's, that's for another day. You know, so, something else that no one sees that we have a ton of hours into is my exhaust. And I got a lot of hate on social media about my exhaust if anyone goes back and looks at it some of my you know older posts it's like an active exhaust and and, and jesse kind of engineered it so he could probably explain to you a little bit how he did that but if you go back and some of my older posts and look out of it you're gonna say what is that on a fox body like yeah what is that nonsense It has cutouts, so it has your typical, well, it's a, it's a turbo car, so it has a, a down pipe into a wide pipe into two mufflers. And then I just, I, I routed two three-inch cutouts to go around the muffler to just bypass the muffler. It still kind of uses the muffler because it's still there, but it's, it's a lot of the sound escapes it. And it's, it's like, I call it active. So it has, you know, it's loud or it's, it's pretty quiet with the, with the exhaust flowing through the cook's mufflers. And of course there's now mufflers that have cutouts built in. Um, so, you know, there's always somebody else that's just going to one up you. So. Right. You're hey, be- Tommy, now, before we forget, we got to hear the, the war admiral story. So again, this, this, it actually goes back to uh, my old white GT that Jesse was talking about earlier. I mean, this car was like a um, typical 90s drag race, three car, roll cage, you know, bigs, littles, get rid of the wipers, get rid of the power steering, get rid of everything. I had like a, a DSS 306 in this thing, but the, the car would run like 1070s, you know, with, with a little Vortec A trim. And that, that's true with a little Vortec A trim and a 306, you know, some trick flow heads, but it was so light and, and we did a lot of work to the suspension. So my, uh, my, my, my buddy, Mike, um, used to joke with me when that movie Sea Biscuit came out and he'd be like, Oh, you got to call this car Sea Biscuit, you know, the little horse that could kind of thing. So I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I never saw this movie. So I watched the movie <laughs> and he would always call my wife, my white GT Sea Biscuit, Sea Biscuit, Sea Biscuit. And I was like, God, oh, name sucks, whatever. <laughs> but, but I watched the movie and in that movie, uh, there was a racehorse in 1937, a uh, triple crown winner, like undefeated, like horse of the year and, you know, son of man of war. And the horse's name was War Admiral. So we're going back 15, 17 years now. I've always liked that name for a Mustang. I just didn't have the right car to name it that until, until this one. So the, the name comes from a 1937 racehorse that was a triple crown winner, horse of the year. You know, that's where the name ultimately comes from. See, it's interesting. And now I selfishly, I've heard this story once before and I love it, but uh, I got to lay my cards on the table here. Cause I thought, I wonder, I know that I always knew there was a special story with you and your dad in the car. But I'm right. Like, I wonder if maybe his, his, dad was in the war or something to that effect but then i come to find out you were actually in the military and right it, I, was, I was in the army but i'm not old enough to be an admiral right <laughs> but that that's where the that's where the uh that's where the name comes from ultimately uh 
I got it from a movie that was based off of a true story and a real racehorse. That's, That's awesome. Yeah. Well, now listen, boys, I know that we're on different time zones, so I don't want to keep you guys. Um, right. Well, Jesse, you're expecting. And uh, Tom, Five you're. Out. Yeah. At this point, Five weeks out. Yeah. And Tom, your little gals at home. Why don't we finish on the kid note? Because I know that's essentially what spurred this whole thing for you, right? Yeah. Your dad taking you for ice cream. How special yeah, is it so, taking your little girl for ice cream in the War Admiral? So here, here's the thing. I, I just want to, I'm just going to take one, one more quick minute here. Uh, three things made this car what it is. Um, one, this, the statement one day, you know, I watched my dad say that his whole life and it never, it never happened. I didn't want that to happen to me Two, I wanted my, um, I, I guess the long story short of it is, you know, I, I didn't want to not have the car of my dreams or not, And I didn't want to not, ha I, I didn't want to wait till I was so old where I couldn't enjoy it. You know, um, the car, Ultimately, the car was built to take my kid to Dairy Queen. I mean, that's the reality of it. When I first came in and talked to Jeff, you know, Jesse's partner, I said, I want a cool car to take my kid to Dairy Queen, you know. So if she gets the same feeling out of this car as I got out of my dad's 68 GTO, I win. You know, I, we've brought the car all over the places. It's got trophies. It's got plaques. It's got all kinds of cool things, you know. But at the end of the day, when I'm dead and gone, you know, if she has the same memories in this car that I had in his, then it's a thumbs up. She loves the car. She actually put on her Christmas list. <laughs> it's funny. I was going through her Christmas list. It's like Barbie, Barbie, Barbie. Hatchimals. Hatchimals. <laughs> and a jacket that says War Admiral. <laughs> you know? So. <laughs> she, this is a, a 10-year-old girl. Like. Right. That, that is absolutely first class. You know, so <laughs> we. We. I'm, I'm very pleased with, with the end result of the car. And we got a couple of things that, uh, I might have a couple more tricks up my sleeve with it. That They're, I never took. They're never done. You know, never. we spoke, I can't believe I'm talking to someone internationally about, yeah. um, you know, a, a, a dream I've had for years. It's, it's, it's very humbling. You know, it's very humbling. You know, buddy on that note. And I mean, I got it. In all honesty here, you got me a little misty because, uh, I mean, my kids mean the world to me too. I got three little rug rats and um, I love nothing more than taking them out in that car, you know. Yeah, it's uh, great. That's the things they're going to remember. Yeah. The smile on their face, the smell of fuel, like it's just the whole thing is an event and they like going. And I mean, <laughs> admittedly, I can't say this as much as you can. But they're like, Dad, let's go out in your race car, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's no, that's she. She, you know, why I was being built? She would always say that to me. I actually have, I actually have video of it. I'll, I'll send you a video of my daughter asking me about that. Dad, when's the race car coming home? When's the race car coming home? So, well, it's not going to be quite a race car. I mean, maybe, maybe <laughs> you know. But no, it's same thing. It's 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 really what it's all about, and and I truly believe. That's where these cars are, are going. You know, the older we get, you know, it's there's always going to be drag cars. There's always going to be that. And I love that. And I did that my whole life. You know, now it's it's more like I see guys, you know, building cars that they can enjoy the, with their kids, you know, with their family. And I personally, on my level, get more enjoyment out of this car, taking my daughter to you know, a Dairy Queen, or she thinks she's so cool when I drop her off at school in it, <laughs> than I ever did, you know, going 10 70s at a track. As crazy as that is, you know, I get more satisfaction out of it. So to end it like that, it's, it's great, man. It's yeah, great. I We're, couldn't agree more boys. And you know what? I think that's a good place to wrap because yeah, if I get sorry, goosebumps we one more, literally go on all night. Yeah, we <laughs> can talk about <laughs> I, I was going to say, if I get goosebumps one more time, like my skin's going to fall <laughs> off. So you guys are killing me here. This means a lot.